Hello everyone. In this video, let us learn the concept of two-dimensional arrays. See, whatever we have learned till now are one-dimensional arrays. Two-dimensional array are also called as matrix. On this, many questions will be asked. First, let us understand these two-dimensional arrays in detail. For example, first let us understand how to declare the two-dimensional array. To declare the two-dimensional array, you will use the syntax like this int a of 5 and 4. What is the meaning of this is this int is a data type, data type of the elements which you can store in the array and 5 is the row size and 4 is the column size of the matrix. A is the name of the array. And for name of the array, we will use the same convention as the name of the variable. Okay. So now let us understand how the memory will be represented in a two-dimensional array. For example, if you declare a two-dimensional array like this, a of 2, comma 3, in this case, two rows will be created and three columns will be created like this. Two rows and three columns. One, two, three. For example, if you are storing some values here, 5, 6, 7, 8, 4, 3. Now here, the index of the rows starts from 0. 0, 1, 2. The index of columns starts from 0. And index of rows also start from 0. 0, 1, 0, 1, 2. Like this. Okay, column also start from 0. Rows also start from 0. Now if I want to access this element, the element which has 5, then you will have to write a of 0 comma 0. Okay. Because the index of the first box is 0th row and 0th column. A of 0 comma 0. In the same way, can you tell me how to access the element 7? That is A of 0 comma 2. 0th column. Sorry, 0th row, second column. Can you tell me how to access the number 4? A of 1 comma 1. How to access number 8 here? A of 1 comma 0. I hope you are, you are getting what I am writing here. But this is only for our understanding. Actually inside the computer, how the memory allocation is done is always the memory is allocated in the continuous memory location. Only. Okay, which means six boxes are created. You can see that here also a of 2 comma 3 means there are six boxes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here six boxes are created. The first box is for 0 comma 0, then 0 comma 1, 0 comma 2, then 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3, sorry, 0 comma 1, 0 comma 2. No, I made a mistake here. I'm sorry. 0 comma 0, 0 comma 1 and 0 comma 2 is done. After that, it is 1 comma 0, 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2. Okay. So these are the boxes here. Okay. They are in continuous memory allocation. First, always rows will get filled. After that, columns will get filled in the computer. Okay. Remember this. Now let us understand what are the various methods of initializing a two-dimensional array. So how to initialize two dimension array. So this is very important. For example, if you declare the array like this, int a of 2 comma 3, then you can initialize like this. You write one main curly braces. Inside that, I will write two curly braces here with a comma. Because there are how many rows? Two rows are there. So that's why two curly braces. In the first row, how many elements I can fill? Three elements I can fill. I can write like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now in the memory representation, how it is get filled is, let us understand in this method only because it is easy to understand for us. Two rows, three columns are there. First, always the rows will get filled. So this is first row. 1, 2, 3 will be filled here. Then 4, 5, 6. Second row elements will get filled here. Okay, this is how memory will be allocated. Now in the same way, if you take one more 
uh, example, if you write like this, int a of two comma three, that is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. Now how the elements will get filled? See a of two comma three means there will be six boxes. Two rows, three columns. Two into three, six boxes will be there. I am writing two rows and three columns. I already told you always the rows will get filled first. So one, two, three will be filled first. Then four, five, six will be filled. Okay. So what if you are initializing like this? Int a of two comma three is equal to one, two, three, four. Now what happens? Six boxes will be there as it is because there are two rows and three columns. And I told you first, first row will get filled first. So one, two, three, and then four will get filled here. These two places are empty. They will be filled with zero. Okay. This is how the value will be filled. Now, one more example, if I take, if you write like this int a of this, this one, I am keeping it em empty and I am writing here one, two, three, four, five, six. See, even if you keep it empty, it will not give any error. How many rows are there here? One row and two rows are there, which means automatically the computer will take the value two here because there are two rows. And what if you initialize the value like this? Int a of three is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. In this case, for the computer, it is very difficult to identify the number of rows because here with this curly braces, we have indicated the number of rows already. There are two rows here for the computer. It is difficult. So that's why the computer will give error in this case. You should not declare like this. Next one. Again, int, if I leave two boxes empty and if I write one, two, three, four, this will also give error because computer cannot calculate both sun columns here. Okay. What if you declare like this int a of two comma three is equal to I can write two, two, four, five. Now what happens here? Six boxes will be created because two rows and three columns are there. And what happens? We are telling that in the first row, you write two and you write two, but in the first row, there is no other element is not given. So zero will be filled here. Now in the second row, write four and five third element is not mentioned. So zero will be filled here. Okay. Now the last example int a of two comma three is equal to, if you write like this one, one, one and two, three, four, five. See, in the second row, you can write only three elements, but you are writing four elements here. This will not give any error, but it will create problem to us because the last element may overwrite some value, which is already there. So we should not do this in our programming, but remember that it will not give any error since computer will not bound check the arrays. So it is very difficult for us, if something happens with this element, okay. For example, if already some element seven is there and this seven is overwritten by five. Now we are trying to access this seven here, but seven, we are not getting because you declare the array. You initially, you initialize the array wrongly. Okay. That's why this we should not do when we are writing the program, all this different ways of initialization is for the MCQs of the placement examinations with this, I will end this video. Thank you.